Hi everyone, welcome to This Work World, my name is Joe and in this video I'm going to give you 10 tips about the Trans-Siberian train ride. Um, I did it myself, I went from London to Beijing using trains only. I went from Moscow all the way to uh, Ulan-Udi through Mongolia into Beijing. Okay, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Tip number one, set your watch to Moscow time. So the first thing you need to remember, all the train stations are set to Moscow time. So my first tip is to have a watch and always set this watch to Moscow time and never change it. If you have your mobile with you, the mobile will change to whatever local time setting. Tip number two, bring eating utensils. Since you're gonna be spending a great deal of time on the train, chances are you're gonna get a bit hungry. So bring yourself a metal mug, some collapsible bowls, and also fork as well. So your food options are to get the food from the food carriage, but my personal recommendation is to get the food from the babushkas. The babushkas are these old ladies at every stop, and they sell everything from like snacks, um, bowl noodles, bread, hams, and maybe home cooked food as well. Plus in a few of the stops, some of the bigger stations, you'll find quite a few stores there, and they stock more and more things. Especially towards the eastern part of Russia, you'll find that there's a smoked fish called omul, which I probably recommend. Tip number three, the samovar is your best friend. At the end of every carriage is the hot water dispenser, or in Russian, the samovar. Of course, you can use the hot water to make tea, coffee, a hot a pot noodles. Tip number four, bring a phrase book or Google Translate. It's really fun to try and just speak the other person's language. In my case, uh, my Russian is absolutely terrible. So it's a great, great icebreaker. So I thoroughly recommend it. Tip number five, choose the right level of comfort for you. So there's first class, which is two berths in a single cabin. Second class is four berths in the cabin. And third class is a dormitory style. So you have one long hallway and it's literally up and down full of beds. You don't get any privacy on, on the third class. First class is more full of uh, tourists and foreigners and um, businessmen. I did try first class a couple of times. It's just so not worth the money. It, first class is generally twice the price of second class. And I predominantly would recommend going with second class. That way you get the best of both worlds. You have a bit of privacy, a bit more space to store your luggage. I kind of would, if I was to do the Trans-Siberian again, I probably would go to third class for the smaller trips just as the experience. I've been told by people who've done the third class, it's a lot more of an adventure, or you're in a bit of a tight budget, then definitely go for third class all the way. On first class, if you're stuck with somebody who's just really antisocial, just a bit awkward, then you, you are kind of like stuck with them. Tip number six, dealing with the train tickets. Peak time for the Trans-Siberian is July and August, like when most of the holidays is. And if you plan to buy at the station, then make sure you bring a pen and paper. You can't guarantee everybody to speak English. And with the Cyrillic alphabets, it can be a bit tricky to try and communicate what you need. Having some basic translations on what is top bunk, lower bunk, first, second or third class, really, really helps you. But remember, you can't buy tickets more than six days in advance. And there's also a scaling discount system. There is a link I'll add to the description where it points out what the scaling dis discounts is. But basically, the more advanced that you buy, the cheaper it gets. Tip number seven, baby wipes and tissues. Assume that there's no working showers. Absolutely essential if you're thinking of doing the whole thing, i.e. Moscow to Vladivostok, all in one go. Tip number eight, stop off at various places. I recommend breaking up the whole trip into smaller chunks, otherwise you might go a bit crazy and suffer from a bit of cabin fever. One of the places I recommend you try and stop off at is Yekaterinburg. Basically, it's quite a culturally and historically uh, important point in the whole of history of Russia because that was where the last royal family of Russia was actually murdered. I also recommend stopping off at Akusk. Akusk is one of the nearest major train stations to Lake Baikal. And Lake Baikal, if you're a big fan of nature and big lakes, that's pretty much the ultimate location. It's in, in fact one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the whole of world. Tip number nine, do not piss off the Provenista. The, so the Provenista is basically the carriage attendant who uh, looks after their particular carriage. Every carriage has one. Yeah, I got myself into a little bit of trouble um, going from my second class carriage to the first class carriage because I didn't realize that you can only use toilets within your carriage. So uh, I ended up getting shot at a Russian. Um, don't do that. They can also give you a helping hand with some night light snacks and souvenirs. Uh, they're especially useful if you somehow manage to lose your cup as they can sell you a nice proper official Russian train cup. Yay! Tip number 10, there's limited storage space. As you probably guessed, you're on a train and there isn't exactly tons and tons of storage space. 
What I don't recommend you do is to bring one of those massive great rolling cases. I recommend you bring yourself a 60 or maybe an 80 litre backpack and also get a bottom bunk because the bottom bunk you can actually lift the chairs and store your backpack actually in them. It's a little bit more expensive but it's definitely worth it. Tip number 11. Bonus tip, there's more than just the main Trans-Siberian. I've done the Trans-Siberian once and the next time I do it I'm actually planning to track out some of these li other lines as well. One of the alternative lines goes to a place called Kazan, and Kazan is the capital of Tatarstan and that particular area is actually a majority of Muslim which is very really different from the rest of Russia. Another lesser known line is the trans mancurian line which is um, towards the end of the whole line towards Vladivostok. If you have time you should also try and get into Mongolia and check out the Trans-Mongolian. I've never seen a restaurant car as amazing as the one on the Trans-Mongolian line. For more information and other like tips and guides the website seat61.com it's a really really good information on the whole Trans-Siberian. In fact, it's the place to go for train travel. And if you're looking to get yourself a, a decent guide, I'll recommend the Lonely Planet and there's also the Trailblazer. I bought both of them and they were really, really useful for me to try and plan out my whole trip. So that's it really, that's my top 10 tips plus the bonus tip. Uh, I'm gonna be compiling a, like a small blog entry with more tips as I go along. And if you guys got any feedback or any other tips, I would love to hear it. Add it to the uh, comments below like this and for more stuff uh, similar to this more t travel tips music and stuff around london definitely subscribe uh -huh.